things checking through as you're throwing the different stages. I, I obviously do it subconsciously because I've done it for so long. I think people need to kind of do it more deliberately so that, I mean, the basic thing is, has you, have you got the clothes centered? Um, which is sort of a fairly obvious one, but I think most people do. When um, you use the way you do that is you just look at one point. Maybe. If you put your finger there and the clay is staying in the same place from it, not wobbling around towards and away from your finger, you know it's got it's on centre. But you need to keep doing that. So when you open out the clay, I have to remind myself what it is I'm making. It actually wasn't going to have a base on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, right. What I'm going to make here is a lemon squeeze. And the lemon squeeze has a hole in the middle of it. So I've gone right down to the wheel edge. How much clay? Yeah, how much clay? A pound. But yes. you then open it up as a ring. So you will open it up like so. And there you have to check with yourself. You have to say, right, you know, what thickness have I got there? And a simple way of doing it is that they're putting a finger on the inside, finger on the wheel head, and seeing the difference that you've got. In the if you lift this finger on the outside up to match the finger on the inside, that gives you the thickness of the bottom of the bottom. Right? And I was saying to Joe, if, if that doesn't serve, what you can then do is take a quill, push it through the clay into down to the wheel head, put your nail on it, pull it out, and you've got the thickness of the bottom of the bottom. And that hole you know, it'll just close and you just press the clay back again and it's not a problem. But it's, it's yeah, it's quite, it's, it's, it, it, it's, you need to do it in a kind of more deliberate way when you're starting. You need to have to say, yourself, right, I've checked that, I've checked that, I've checked that. It'll then become second nature and you won't have to do it. But it does need, it needs doing. Mm -hmm. And it, also what you're doing is you're kind of training your eye. If you've done that, you looked at that and say right that is the right thing it's not you put that in and it is the right thickness then you're judging it right if you aren't then you adjust and so you go around all right so this is going to be a lemon squeezer and um i'm going to throw the, the middle in to form the middle of the lemon squeezer you know how i use my thumb on the outside to use up all that waste clay to get underneath it so you've got a good section on this, you've got to do the same on the inside as well. You can't do it with your thumb, so I do it with my finger. I get underneath the clay. These again are a really good example of an even section. If you get them right, if you don't get them right, you glaze them, they just crack. So I get underneath the clay there and then I throw this bit in. And obviously as I thin that wall, I have to go back underneath so where the wall's thinner I've used up that extra that's left behind. Because you're going to cut flutes into that later on, do you throw it slightly on the thick side? I don't. I throw it very much the right thing. Now there's again a good point that I keep saying about how pots have to be even. Um, you can do various things like that decoration where I combed into the clay or even making those indents to put the handles and you can do various things like that but then make the clay uneven and you have to when you're working the way that we do with the raw glazing and the fast frying you have to bear that in mind if you've got a, if you've got a, a thickness of wall and you've made an indent in it maybe as part of decoration you've then got this thin bit it's much thinner than the rest of the clay. When that clay gets wet with the glazing and expands, it may well crack there. You have to bear that in mind. With these, you're making the indentations on the outside of, effectively, of the pot. Those sort of indentations are more likely to be a problem on the inside of the pot than the outside, because the outside, when it gets wet, expands outwards. There's nothing stopping it from doing that. If you've 
if it's on the inside of the pot, that inside layer gets wet, it's trying to expand against the mm. rest of the pot. And again, there, if you've got the weakness, it's a problem. Right. It's less a problem than the outside. things about checking the, what you've got as you go along, you, you develop a kind of cross-section view of pots. And it, this is a little bit more complicated in terms of bigger pot, but that section all the way through has to be even. And you should, you should really be looking at pots in cross-section as you're making one. Now with yeah, with this sort, of, um, I do the, I do different um, rooms on my scooters, but on this one I've rather like the mix and blow. I've got a thick edge, so I then pinch this out. cylinder you can't pick up like a bowl. So the technique for this is a, is, a, is a peel. So you put your fingers right at the bottom of the pot. You lift it, you put a couple of fingers underneath, and then when you put it down you reverse the action so the pot is not distorted. <coughs> 